Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> it's Ray Gibson. And uh, another one of those nights <laughs> where I couldn't sleep after laying down. So I probably got, yeah, if I got bags under my eyes. <clears throat> so what do I do when I can't sleep? Is make a vlog. And, um... I wanted to make this one because the, the the last thing that was on my mind before I said, ah, I need to get up and, and, and go say this, was that my last vlog, I said, I don't know what I was thinking, but I said that my book wouldn't be anything about being transgender. What was I thinking or why did I say that? I don't even remember why I said that. See, my life moves so fast and I multitask so fast that I so much happens inside of a week that I can't even I can never get even get caught up with my life with my therapist and I see her every week I chat with a lot of people I do a lot of research I do a lot of posting well, on my timeline. Um, and I just, what, I don't know what I was thinking because throughout that book, let me tell you, know, let me tell you what's going to happen in the first part of my book. I insinuate that as a child, I was thinking like a boy. And then there's spots throughout the book where I keep insinuating that I was a boy. Then, as a man. See, I went back, you know, after I embraced uh, who and what I am, um, just suddenly things came back to me that I had thought from from the age of eight years old throughout my life until 2000, I'll say 2016, when um, I began writing my book all over again from scratch. Well, it wasn't, yeah, it was from scratch. Um, like I said, I do have a, another book from the year that I started to write in 2008 or 2009 called seven years and it was about the period of time from uh, 2001 until 2008 but everything else I lost so I I started over again and you know with the help of, of uh, groups support groups in the area with the help of my two therapists that I've had um, since I came uh, to this area Everything that I had thought on and off throughout my life about being transgender, most of it is in book one. But again, I don't come out and say that that I was transgender because I didn't know that I was. Um, I mean, they didn't. That, that word didn't exist. Transsexuals didn't exist when I was growing up. Um, and by the time I left home, um, in, uh, well, I, I left home and I went to college for a little while, messed that all up. Then I joined the, uh, military and I moved to, um, Los Angeles when I was 20. So, and... See, I should not make vlogs when I'm half here and half not here because I just lost my train of thought. Good thing that won't happen when you read my book. You can just keep going and you won't have to be, um, <coughs> this kind of thing won't happen when you're reading and it doesn't happen when I'm writing. I don't lose my train of thought. Anyway, my, um, so... 
that was thing number one. Yes, when I come out in the book, uh, when I began to get an inkling what was going on in 2012, there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff in there, of course, about me being a trans man. I don't know what I was, I don't know why I said that or what I was thinking. Um, so, there's that. Yes, it's going to have, it's going to be in there, of course. Um, and, and then I thought about something else that, um, <clears throat> I either posted this or I said it in my last vlog. Oh, by the way, I'm not wearing a suit, as you can see. Um, I wore one last night, but I won't tell you why. Um, <laughs> at, at any rate, I said in a post or in a blog that I would give a big shout out to somebody if um, this exclusive uh, interview that I had um, last week, well, a few days ago, um, if it publishes, that I would give a shout out to someone. If that happens, I'm going to give a shout out to him anyway, because he has been nothing but in my corner and gone over and beyond what I could have ever imagined coming out of a doctor. For real. Um, I mean, he has done things for me that I can't even, he, he never had to believe in me. He never had to do anything for me. Um, but every time I've asked him to do something, he jumped on it, if he could. And he probably doesn't need any more clients. <laughs> but I'm going to give a big old shout out uh, to my endo doctor, Vin Tank Preacher. Um, this man, not he trains other doctors about how to deal with us on a healthcare level. He is an endocrinology doctor, and he is just the best thing since sliced bread to me. And I have heard so many stories about um, the care of transgender veterans in the United States. And you see what the clown is doing uh, in the United States when it comes to us transgender veterans or active duty military. So, so this guy, this doctor, is just the complete opposite of what's going on in this country. And I think he actually uh, trains other doctors all over the world. He trains new interns coming into the medical profession before they get their um, uh, their whatever you call it, their doctor, not their doctorate, you know, before they become doctors, um, he's training them. He probably also trains, um, you know, other physicians for all I know on how to care for transgender, transgender veterans. Um, he's written about all over the internet. I mean, if you look him up, you'll find his name everywhere. Um, and I just wanted to say that no matter what happens, Dr. Tim Preacher, I appreciate you. I, I, I couldn't, you are one of the reasons why I am where I am today. Um, along with every um, grassroot transgender in this country who, who saw to it to push for the rights of transgender people uh, nationwide long before um, the uh, NCTE got the Veterans Administration to to at least approve HRT for us. Um, I don't know where where I would be without that, and I don't know where would I where would I where would I be without Dr. Tank Preacher. So I just wanted to put a plug in for him. Um, that he turned me on to this journalist <clears throat> and um, wow um, this isn't going to be a long video because I get myself in trouble if I make them too long I'll start losing my train of thought again um, shit 
Look at this. You see this, folks? A year and a half ago. That wasn't going on. These are freaking worry lines. Okay? I There's no doubt in my mind that it is an age um, that is literally... I, I have had a very tough 2017 um, and a very tough beginning of 2018 for other reasons. <clears throat> and... Um, yeah, at any rate, I just lost it again. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> By the way, did I tell you guys that I'm pretty goofy? There was three things that I wanted to talk about. And the third thing I... Oh! Okay, my, my best friend is going to appreciate this one. Um, so... One of the things that I was taught in Alcoholics Anonymous, and, and I have been clean and sober since May of 1983. But one of the things um, that I was taught was, that is pretty unique to a lot of, unique to people, um, well, not unique inside of AA or 12-step programs in general but really kind of more more so in that world than anywhere else. You know, outside of that world, people find me pretty odd because I'm so, I uh, appear to be so open and honest. But what I found out was that if I stay connected to people, if I keep talking about what's going on with me and things that are, you know, being transparent, I literally talk to myself through people. So whether I'm chatting with them or talking with them on the phone or talking with them in person or whatever about them, about me, it doesn't even matter which direction it goes. I hear my own solutions through just putting it out to them, to somebody else. Um, and I may not have to do that but one or two people before I hear the answer or the solution or I'll hear wait don't do anything so so I was uh, talking with somebody last night or no I'm sorry it was this morning um, about a little I don't know something that I have been thinking about doing and um, has to do with my hometown but in talking with her it, it probably wasn't five minutes after I stopped talking to her that I realized what the answer was she didn't give me the answer talking to her gave me the answer it was it's almost like a reverberation somehow and I wasn't talking with her I was just chatting on social media and um, doing that said boom whoa because I could, you know, look back and see what I was saying and then think about what I was saying and I think very fast on my feet like that. <laughs> and my poor, my poor best friend, this guy is as low-key as I am outrageous. And I end up, I end up talking him to death, okay? But what he doesn't realize is that I'm not just talking to hear myself, you know, hear my own voice. I'm not talking to, uh, to, to, um, vent. I find solutions inside of talking to people, chatting with people, whether I'm doing that online, on the phone, or in person. That's what I was taught in 12-step programs which is unusual makes me transparent and sometimes it makes me way too open so i have to be very careful you know you still can't freaking see this side of my face but anyway i have to be very careful who i share my intimate thoughts with i mean the really intimate ones i can talk to anybody about anything virtually but when it comes to me, 
I can count how many people I'll do that with on one hand. I, I won't I won't do that with anybody. And my level of, um, you know, there's people who live on the surface and there's people who are real in-depth, people are intense. My surface is deeper than a lot of people's depth. Did that make any sense? So when I'm being on the surface with people, I'm still being ultra transparent and deep to them. They don't realize I can be 20 times deeper if um, I was intimate with them or they were a very, very dear friend of mine. And that's why I don't have very many <laughs> because of the things I said on another channel about my mother telling me I was too trusting. So, you know, at 60 years old, I'm still dealing with this thing where I, because I was raised as an adult, not a child, as an adult, I was raised in a very safe environment where it was okay to say a lot of things and it wasn't gonna go anywhere. Uh, it wasn't gonna be gossiped outside of that program. People are human, they're gonna be inside of the program, but it never got outside the program. So, and I'm not part of that world anymore. And so I, sometimes I think the world is my playground when it's not. That it can get me in a lot of trouble very fast because there's a lot of vicious people out there. <clears throat> there's just, the world is not the same place as it was even when I first got clean and sober. Social media has really, really changed people, and it has not changed them for the better. Um, I mean, golly, I mean, people will chew you up and spit you out. They will use you. They will do all sorts of things um, using the social media platforms. So... Anyway, I wanted to put that out there. Oh, God, I made this about 17, 18 minutes anyway. I just wanted to clarify something, a, a misstatement that I made in the last vlog. And I uh, hope everybody has a blessed Sunday, especially for you guys that do something on, um, you know, Sunday is really important to you. Um, for me, I'm getting ready. I'm going, I'm laying it back down because I got on here to say what I was going to say. And now I'm going to have to take, I don't know how long to... Um, upload this thing and make it public but um everybody hey peace out ray gibson